Hey, it's Denise from Loomahead.com and this time I'm going to show you how to take your empty water bottles and turn them into super cute plant holders. If you don't use water bottles and you have some mini cans like those you would find for Vienna sausages, as you can see it turns out just as cute. So get your little mini can, your water bottle, and a 24 peg loom. 22 yards or 12 grams of worsted weight yarn, needle, scissors, and your favorite plant, in my case, air plant. And let's begin. We're gonna be using a single strand of worsted weight yarn. I'm going to secure mine to the anchor peg using a simple knot. You can use a slip knot if you're more comfortable. And then we're gonna take that single strand and put it between the first and last peg. Now I'm gonna be going towards the right. You can go towards the left. The direction has no effect on the pattern. And then we're gonna take the working yarn behind peg one, in front of peg two, behind peg three, and we're gonna draw string cast on all 24 pegs. Now you see how that looks, you're basically in and out, in and out, in a zigzag motion through all of your pegs. So you're basically gonna have 12 behind and 12 in front. Then you're gonna take that working yarn and go behind peg one, bring it forward, and you're gonna lay it loosely over the next few pegs. You can lay the yarn over five, six, seven, however many pegs you're comfortable with, then take the working yarn to the back and hold it with your fingers. With your hook, you're going to knit off, starting with peg two, every peg that has two loops. So take the bottom loop over the top and knit off. And you're gonna see that it's actually every other peg that you're knitting off. Once you have those first few knit off, then take the working yarn, put it over the next few pegs, and again, knit off the bottom loops over the top. And while you guys continue to do that, I wanna take this moment to say thank you to Carol Maple from Promise Learning ATL, to Elise Patron, Penny Pitchard, Kristen Stone, Barbara Ledger, and Mackenzie LeBaron for covering the cost of closed captioning this video for you. Thank you very much, ladies. Now, continue your knit off, and once you've done all of your pegs and you have knit off peg 24 you will be done with your cast on and you're ready then to knit rows one through five where you're basically going to knit the row in other words knit 24 pegs now i want to warn you that peg one on row one doesn't have two loops so you cannot knit off so you skip peg one on row one only and start with peg two and you're going to knit that peg off. Now I'm using the U wrap version of the knit stitch. So you're going to take the working yarn and half wrap the peg and then knit off. Keep in mind that with the U wrap, the more you bend the yarn, the looser the stitch is gonna be. And the straighter your yarn is, for instance, if you lay it completely flat on the peg, the tighter the stitch. So keep that in mind. You can use any version of the e of the uh, knit stitch other than the E-wrap because the E-wrap is going to completely change the look at the project. Once you've done at least two rows, you can go ahead and take the knot off your anchor peg. You no longer need to secure it. And you're ready to finish those five rows. Once you're done, you can do row six where you're gonna knit one, purl one. So to knit the peg, just like before, you're gonna use the U-wrap. So you half wrap the peg and knit off. And then to do the purl stitch, you're gonna take that working yarn and put it under the existing loop Take your hook from the top and scoop up that working yarn to create a new loop. You're gonna take the existing loop off of the peg and then put that new loop on and pull the working yarn to tighten the stitch. Then repeat that same pattern. You're going to knit one peg and purl the next peg and continue. You need to do that knit one, purl one until you're done with your 24 pegs. And then you're ready for row seven where you're basically going to flip the pattern and now you're gonna purl one, knit one. So here we are on peg one. You're gonna take the working yarn and put it under the existing loop. Take your hook from the top, 
and scoop up and create a new loop with the working yarn take the old loop off put the new one on and pull and we're going to continue with the use of the u wrap knit stitch so half wrap the peg and knit off now some of you have asked why i use stitch markers uh, it's very hard for me to keep up with this two stitch pattern without the help of the stitch markers because of my mild ADD. So purl, knit, purl, knit. I know that when I get to my stitch marker right there, I need to do a purl stitch. So with the stitch marker, I only have to remember um, the purl, knit, and then to just repeat that. Without the stitch markers, that would be it shouldn't be but it is um, hard for me to remember so if you are interested in getting stitch markers like these I'm gonna put a link in the description I do have them in my store as well as the um, rubber band version of these stitch markers all right so just continue doing the purl knit right until you have your 24 pegs and then you're gonna repeat rows six and seven 12 more times that will give you a total of 31 rows i wanted to show you what that looks like and it's basically row six then seven then six then seven until you've done that 12 times after that you're ready to draw string cast off those 24 pegs so take your working yarn and you're going to wrap it around your loom a full time and then a couple of pegs three or four get your scissors and cut that working yarn and then with your hook you're going to come from the top and scoop up the working yarn and feed it through you're going to make sure that you're doing this to all 24 pegs otherwise everything's going to fall apart so scoop up and feed through the working yarn all 24 pegs and once you've done that you've made sure you're around 24 then you can take the loops off the peg and you're done knitting so now your project is off the loom and you're going to start stretching your stitches this is a very important part don't avoid it it needs to be done otherwise it won't look well then you're going to go to the bottom and you're going to uh, start kind of closing it but not completely so you pull on that drawstring just enough to make the opening smaller to decrease that uh, hole on the bottom but you don't close it all right and you're going to pull a little bit on the top and again make sure that you stretch those stitches now you're going to put the cozy to the side and get your water bottle you're going to get your scissors and we're going to cut this top portion off and the bottles are really thin so any scissors should work fine take the top off and then you're going to cut it to uh, about the height of two and a half inches and which is about where the bottle kind of curves in like if it had a waist then take that top you took off and push it in you can then get your cozy back and get a needle thread um, the needle with the drawstring cast on and take the needle and you're going to feed it through those cast on loops at least two times and while you guys are doing this I'm going to stop uh, and say thank you to Lorena Reese and my patreon patrons for their continued support of the channel thank you so much guys all right keep uh like i said feeding your needle through those loops at least two times when you're done bring it to the inside weave it in and then get your scissors and you're going to cut off the excess yarn all right turn it back to the front and you're going to get your bottle that you've already cut up and you're going to put it inside the cozy pull on that drawstring which is your cast off drawstring and again you're going to get uh, your needle and thread it with that drawstring and just like before you're going to feed the needle through those in this case cast off loops and uh, try to do it at least two times if you don't no biggie but at least one full time you need to feed um, the drawstring through those cast off loops then um, weave it in 
and cut off the excess. Now, if you're using a different plant that needs soil, this is the time to put it in. Mine are air plants. So I'm just gonna add some Spanish moss and then my air plant. Another thing I wanted you to know is that the written pattern does include a larger size and I'll leave a link in the description for that. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you'll do one better and share it with a friend. All right, until next time.